like God putting it there. And so God gives us his word that he created us. He loves us. Even though we can choose to make our own way and go our own direction, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except for me. And he's not going to just ignore that. He's not going to go against his word, against his character. He can't do that. He's always true. He's always faithful. He always holds his promises. And I've been reading a lot about disciples, not just Jesus' disciples, but disciples who have gone through history through the Middle Ages and, and professed Jesus as Lord to the king and to the queen of England and to other people around the, the world, and they died for their faith because they didn't believe it. They thought they were heretics. There's a man named William Tyndale. Have you guys ever heard of him? William Tyndale is, he was a man uh, who, just like us, he was just like us, but his mission, he was so sold out on Jesus, he was so convinced that this was true, and people need to know the truth that he translated the Bible from Greek and Hebrew by hand to English. Amen. Hours and hours and hours, night after night after night, spending time alone, spending time in prayer, asking God to help me to write every word down, not no mistakes, just write it word by word in English. And because of people like William Tyndale, now we have this book available in English, or if you speak Spanish, it's available in Spanish. People translated it in Chinese and Russian and Japanese and, and every language because God wants people to be saved. God wants people to know the truth. And so it's serious. And when Jesus says he's going to separate people, the sheep on the right and the goats on the left, you got to ask yourself, which one are you? I know that I'm a sheep, and it doesn't sound too appealing. I'm a sheep? That's a really strange animal. It, they're, they're not very intelligent. They need a shepherd. But that is us. We, we're not very intelligent when it comes to, to really look down and see what we know. You know, people can know math like none other. People can know English like none other. People can make a car and build an airplane and fly it. That's amazing. But... Nobody on this world knows everything. We, when we look at everything, like God was talking to Job, were you there when I created the world? Were you there when I established the sea and made its boundaries? You know, how does a fox get its young? How does an eagle swoop down and find its prey? All these different things that God was saying to Job, he's saying to us as well, were you there? Do you know how this works? Do you know how that works? It's like, uh, uh, no. <laughs> I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like I don't know anything when I look at all of those things. But it's great because God knows everything and he's always there. He's always with us and he loves us. And uh, I talk to people all the time and the question comes up. I ask them, where would you go? If you died today, would you go to heaven? What do you believe? And they would say all kinds of crazy things. Some people think, yeah, they'll go to heaven because they're a good person. Some people think, oh, there is no hell, so we don't have to worry about that. Oh, there, you know, I'm, I believe that I'm just going to live on an island filled with beautiful women, and everything's going to be happy, happy, happy all the time. <laughs> it's like, well, where'd you get that? Like, where does that come from? I don't know. Just in my head, man, what I think about. It's like, well, so if what you think about can happen and become true, why don't you start thinking that cancer goes away? Why don't we start thinking that everybody is nice to each other? It doesn't happen. So it's not true. What we think, you know, uh, in, in Proverbs, there's a verse uh, from 14, Proverbs 14. Um, it says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. We think we know what we're talking about. We think we know what's going on. We think we got it all figured out. But if it doesn't hold to God's word, if it's not lining up with his word, it's not working. It's not going to happen. And we're going we're gonna to face very serious consequences. And, man, 
I tell you, another subject, it's not easy to talk about, really, it isn't easy to talk about at all. But Jesus told us, he warned us, he gave us his word, and he spoke to the Pharisees, he spoke to Sadducees, he spoke to his disciples, he spoke to everybody, and we have it to see what hell is really about. When you ask people who live in sin and they live in the in the very wild rock business or the Hollywood and, and you ask these people, what do you think hell is? They'll say, oh, that's just a word I use all the time. That's it. You know, who cares? You ask them, what is hell? Is that a place to... Deep down, everybody thinks hell is a bad thing. Hell is considered a bad thing, but what is it really? And people believe that hell is somewhere else. If, it, if hell even exists, you're probably just going to go there for a little while and maybe get hurt a little bit for your you know, wickedness that you did on earth. And then God's going to let you out and you're going to be in heaven forever and everything's going to be fine. But Jesus, however, said it's everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment, which means you don't get out. And it's a place... The Bible says it's a place consumed with terrors and it's suffering and it's a lake of fire and brimstone. It, these are hard things to say because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't register with us that we burn forever. If you die in your sins and you don't accept Jesus as your Lord, you burn forever and ever. We can't grasp that, but that's the reality that Jesus is warning us about. That's why he came in the first place to die on the cross so we don't have to go there. Yeah. We can choose him. We can become his child and be saved from that. But the people that don't, the goats, Jesus is telling about the goats. Where are they going? Not the animal goats. I'm not talking about those. But people who reject Jesus are considered the goats. They are consumed with terrors. There's suffering. There's lake of fire and brimstone. There's torment day and night. The smoke from their torment ascends forever. And they have no rest or day or night. And they hunger and they thirst. There is no water in hell. There is no hope in hell. There is no peace and there's no love. And there's no joy. And there's no escape. And people don't want to think about it because they, they, they're too busy living their lives in sin. They're too busy living their lives as they please. And I bet you this, this poem I'm going to read to you, I got it from another sermon uh, I, when I heard it the first time, it just shook me up and just really slapped me in the face. And like, wow, this is like so good. I need to share this with someone. And so I wrote it all down. And imagine if somebody was allowed to die and go to hell, and then they were given the chance to come out. And the whole world saw this person come back from the dead, and they want to say something to the world. And they give them a microphone and say, we're going to broadcast this. You were dead for like months, and you came out, and now we want to know what's on the other side. We, we need to know. Tell us. Because we don't, we don't believe the Bible. We want to know what you have to say. You were there. So that this person reads it in poem form what went down. And they crawled out of hell, and they got to say something to the world. It might say something like this. <clears throat> Listen to me, everyone, young and old. These are facts that are true. Could this little poem be meant for you? Read a little and you will see what Satan has for you and me. A pretty picture he will show. The other part he'll hide. You'll never see, my precious friend, what's on the other side. He'll tell you to live it up. You're young and full of life. But never turn your back, my friend, for he'll pull a knife. Before too long, he's got your soul. To hell with it he'll go. There will be no mercy there, my friend. There will be no rock and roll. Wild and weird noises will be heard. You'll think you've lost your mind. Wild and crazy sounds you'll hear. It won't be ACDC this time. The preacher warned me of this place, how hot the flames will be. I laughed it off and continued on. I just didn't listen. Now look at me. Laughter, laughter stopped. The fun is gone. My soul cries out in pain. Jesus! Please have mercy. I promise I will change. But then a voice so cruel and loud began to laugh at me. The mercy.